welcome back to my channel. I'm going to get right into this. I've recently become obsessed with a game, and that game is called Potionomics. And there's one thing in the game that you focus on a lot, your potion shop. And I want to build it. So we're going to do that. I hoarded all my trash. And now this is the selection of materials I have. right into this i sculpted the potions for the shop first because why would you need a potion shop if you don't have potions for said potion shop i used a fimo soft brick of clay to make these and i wouldn't recommend it it was a little bit too soft and smushed everywhere all the time the goal here is to use these as bases and make molds of them with silicone then cast them with resin so that i can actually make them translucent and more sparkly and potion-esque versus just you know blocks of white clay and I gotta be honest, this entire project started off with me going, I'm just gonna make the potion bottles from this game because I like them so much. And then I started to make different parts of the potion shop and now it has evolved into over 600 gigabytes of footage on my computer and I have no more storage space and I have to make this project actually work because if I don't soon, then I'm gonna actually go insane. Moving on from that, these are the final potion bottles that I am going to make wonderful molds of. Right now I'm molding my little mini potion bottles and today we're gonna to be using Mold Star 31T silicone. I really like this because it mixes by volume, not weight, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's super easy. You just get two cups and pour an equal amount in each one of them, then put them together and stir. Then you pour that silicone over top of each of your little bottles and you are ready to wait for them to cure for like an hour. Now I'm not finished with these, but there is something I'm finished with. And that is itchy, annoying, ugly t-shirts. Which is why I'm happy to introduce this video's sponsor, Into the AM. They're a team of really cool artists that make graphic t-shirts. And now, I know some of you might not be super into graphic t-shirts, but if you're not into graphic t-shirts, they also have plain shirts. I'm wearing one right now. I've been wearing one. These are the only things that have been in my laundry for the past, like, week because they're soft and they're not scratching my skin. We're gonna get back into the video, but not before I quickly tell you, if you click the link in my description or use the code SOUP10, that's S-U-O-P-1-0, you get an extra 10% off your order. Just click the link in the description because that's probably easier. Thanks into the AM. Now that the silicone is cured on these, I'm gonna cut what's called a relief line, which lets you more easily open your mold up so that you can get whatever piece you've cast out of it without just ripping it. Now, I don't actually know how to properly cut these and I probably should have looked it up, but I did not. So some of them worked, some of them ended up ripping anyways, but by the end of the process, I had a bunch of these little molds to use. I'm using resin with these so that I can cast a bunch of the potion bottles and make them very shiny and pretty with alcohol ink and pearl pigments. And this is like the silicone we use where it's a one-to-one -one by volume. You put one part A, one part B, and then you stir them together. I picked out all of my different colors for the bottles and it's smart to do this ahead of time because otherwise you're rushing while your resin is actively curing and you don't know what you're doing. Now even though I picked out all of these ahead of time, my resin started flash curing which means it cures at a way more rapid pace than what it's supposed to and that pissed me off. That's also why some of these don't have any videos of me actually mixing in the pigments but I'm just dividing the resin here into different little cups so that I can make each individual color without having to mix an entire new batch of resin every time. I used alcohol inks and pearl pigments with these and really important tip if anyone's doing this at home, alcohol ink is a different type of ink than just ink ink because the colorant is suspended in alcohol which evaporates and also doesn't have any sort of negative effect on resin except inhibiting the cure but eventually it evaporates enough that the cure still happens. What I'm saying is under no circumstance should you put any sort of pigment that contains water into resin. The amount of air bubbles coming out of the gold resin indicated to me that all of this was flash curing and I had to really quickly pour these or my resin was just gonna harden. And I don't know what caused this flash cure. It could be because the resin I used was kind of old, but it was annoying. Luckily, these all turned out fine and still cured. And so I just popped them out of the molds and they, were, they weren't good to go. There's still a lot we have to do. Off screen, I made tiny little tags for the bottles out of polymer clay and embroidery thread. 
and I think they look pretty cute. And then it's time to paint on all the little corks because a potion bottle is not a potion bottle without a cork. It simply is not. These didn't pop out of the molds with a shiny finish, so I added some Varathane varnish to them to give them a shiny finish, and it also makes the sort of pearl pigments really shine and pop and look very good. See? See? See how much better it looks with the gloss? So much better. And after a few coats of the glaze, I said, these were done. But the next step is building the place where you can sell the potions. Now, if we look really hard, we can see that there are three walls. So I cut those out of foam core board. And since I'm not a carpenter for all the trim on those walls, I used cardboard as wood and then glued it together with hot glue. Now pretend to off screen I repeated that step about 1800 times to make floorboards and now you're caught up with what I've done. Minus the airbrushing in details and shadows and also using an alcohol marker to draw on every individual wood grain floorboard line. But I digress because that is not important and it was not entertaining to watch whatsoever. Neither are these clips really but I don't know someone said that this was enthralling. I used some thin cardboard, the kind you would get from an empty frozen taquito box to make these little shingles on the walls to make the beautiful little shiplack panels. I figured out later that I could almost sculpt into the cardboard this wood texture and I don't know why I decided to just paint on cardboard. Paint is a liquid, cardboard doesn't like liquid. I didn't seal this with anything and it just it made the cardboard melt almost. Call me Picasso because I know what underpainting is, and since all of these parts of this wall are supposed to be a baby blue, I knew that I should not leave them black underneath, because then the baby blue color I paint on here would not be baby blue, it would be bitch barf blue. Just like all of these white parts that I'm painting beige wouldn't be beige, they would be barf brown butthole beige. To make the little curved alcove, I curved a piece of thin cardboard cereal box around my base. Then I gave that piece of cardboard a base of its own so that it could slide and fit under the floorboards. Then I traced that base to make these little shelves that I glued in so that I can put tiny little miniature potion bottles on them. Then my genius decided to airbrush this because I went airbrush not acrylic paint, airbrush no make cardboard melt, airbrush literally more liquid than acrylic paint what was i thinking then i moved on to this tubing which i'm gonna be honest i don't think this is up to code i don't think it is but i decided to paint wire copper instead of just buying copper wire i don't quite understand why i didn't just buy a copper wire it would have been f it would be easier just like i don't understand why i didn't just use copper polymer clay but instead i was like let me paint it it'll be so fun i glued all of it together and i also glued my fingers to it about 18 times and then i attached it to the wonderful wall I added in some doohickeys and doodads over top of it to match the reference image and it made it look- it made it look a lot better. I glued the walls to the floor and I am a construction worker now certified. I don't have a forklift certification though so I guess you probably won't want to hire me. Then I looked at my reference image and I went, oh my god, what am I gonna use for that dome piece? Then I remembered I had this weird plastic shell from a Christmas ornament and it was- it was- it was all good. It wasn't that hard. Then I looked at my reference image and there's this tree stuff that grows along this part. So I sculpted it. Air dry clay was possibly the worst mistake I made in this entire project. It literally looks like I am molding a piece of sh together. After it was done drying it, it looked equally as sh so I decided I had to paint it a different color and then I did that and it looked still like poop. After all of that, I- oh f I still have to do the window. There's a giant window in this. Oh my god, the window! For the window, I'm gonna use this little piece of plastic that came in this Ikea picture frame. We don't need that part anymore. And I'm just gonna see if I can cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna be gluing it onto the back side of the wall. So the outer rim of it won't be visible. It'll be hidden by the wall, which is just genius because I know that this isn't gonna go how I want it to. And we have our window. I'm actually surprised with how easily this cut. Then I hot glued that bad boy onto the back of the wall that the, obviously that the window was on. No, I glued it onto a different wall for fun. I smushed it on there and then I just laid the entire thing down to try and make sure that it stayed on flat. 
and it needs a border. So I figured out I could roll a piece of clay out and use this Lego cup to trace exactly how big I needed this wood border to be. Then I was like, crap, I need the inner circle. And I found a pasta sauce container lid that worked perfectly and I used it to make a little impression. And then I cut it all out. And you're gonna be hearing this a lot. I then gave the clay a wood texture. This happens 800 times in this video, so get used to it. I popped that into the oven to bake, then I painted it, and this beautiful shade of brown really makes the window, how you say, pop. I would be curious to see how much hot glue I used in this entire project, but look at how much better this window looks once I add that trim. Now the only thing left to do is fix the ugly borders that look like foam boards still. Okay, well not the only thing left to do, but the only thing right here. And I know that these have been finished in the past few shots, but we still have to make the spires. I cut out a few pieces of cardboard and hot glued them together to make the base shape, and I wasn't very concerned about how rough this looked right now because I knew that I was going to be completely covering it with clay pieces. Now if you were paying attention, you would notice that there are shingles on this roof, and so I'm making the shingles. I made three base shingle shapes to shingle my shack. And now I don't wanna remake those shapes over and over again, so I put them into a little box, and then I mixed up a little silicone and I poured that over the little box, and now we have a wonderful mold for scooping and shaping all these little pieces of clay into shingles that we will never have to sculpt again. Then I'm magically attaching them to the spire with uh, hot glue. It's a wizard's favorite tool. To make the little cobblestone bits for the bottom part of this spire, I rolled out a piece of clay that was like colored, like cobblestone, but it, it burnt in the oven. Pissed off! So I said, no, I'm not redoing this. And I cut those little pieces up and I just ended up painting over them completely. And I really hate to admit this, but I think it might actually look better that way. And that really, that stings a little bit because I thought I had prepared so well. But I guess no amount of preparation can really, you know, prepare you to build a miniature potion shop. Damn, that thing's so f***ing ugly, oh my god, whoa, it had a glow up. Now let me tell you, it keeps glowing up from here on out because it's getting a paint job and then it's getting that paint job wiped off and then it's getting more paint. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, but wait, it's missing, it's missing the moss and the wood. I decided not to add any of the wood pieces because they just didn't look good with the way I had built the spires, but I got this moss at, I think, like a, a dollar store, and I added some school glue in there, some just white glue, mixed it up, put it on, and when it dried, these things looked so- why is- who is stomping up- there's an ogre that lives above me. The ogre simply cannot stop me from attaching these to the main shop though, so get wrecked, ogre. While we're over here attaching things to the wall, I'm gonna just attach these shelves by hot gluing them on. And it's kind of hard to hot glue things without the hot glue just getting everywhere. So if you see hot glue in the final shots of this project, no you didn't. And that is the base done. First, we're gonna build the two main selling tables. Before I could actually build any of these miniature items, I had to set a scale and I'm this, I wasn't really successful, but I tried. I sketched out the top layer of what I thought the shape sort of looked like based on the reference pictures I could find, but since it's mostly a top-down view, this might be a little bit skewed proportion-wise. And if you're using polymer clay, there's this really cool technique where you can draw out your shape and then transfer it to the clay just by rubbing it down with the graphite side facing the clay, because you're just rubbing the graphite shavings essentially onto the clay. And then I cut out that wonderful little transfer. I really like using this parry knife to cut out any clay pieces where my fingers are gonna be close to where I'm cutting because it's so dull that you have to really, really try to cut yourself. To get the wood grain texture in all these little shelves, I used a bunch of silicone tools to just trace in wood grain, and I tried my best. And I also tried to match the reference image as much as I could and cut out the little notches and divots on the ends of the shelving system. I think it makes it look a lot cooler than just two planks of wood, so yay, good art design. I absolutely did not want to repeat this texture process, so instead I took the pieces that I was building for the shelf, I put them in a little thing, and I made a silicone mold of them. Because silicone, as we've learned, 
is God's tool. I use the same stencil I used for the top for the bottom, except I didn't cut out the little divots on the sides. I just left it as a rectangle just so I could get the sizing right. I did the same thing where I rolled out a sheet of clay, then cut out rectangles to be the inserts that hold the top of the display away from the bottom. Anytime I'm using a weird liquid glue like this, it's translucent liquid clay, and it's just really great for attaching pieces together when you're gonna bake them in between stages because you can't use hot glue because you can't put that in an oven and super glue you also can't put in an oven so and with that our two wonderful display selling tables are done but they need to be painted so let's do that i immediately learned my lesson that airbrushing is simply not something i'm good at i'm i'm horrible at it i'm horrible at it okay i fully wash these off in the sink and then just repainted them with acrylic paint they, the airbrushing did not stay. And you would think I would have learned my lesson, but I tried to airbrush about 18 other things in this project, all without them working. So here I actually was smart and used the f***ed up airbrush painting to my advantage and blended acrylic paint into it to make an ombre, which matches the reference image a lot better. Now let's make the little boxes that go under this. And you might have noticed earlier when I was molding things in this shot and pouring silicone on my finger that there's a box in that mold. So yes, I did pre-make these, mold them, and then cast them with resin so I could paint them. I also decided to use my my resin printer for some pieces which are in this next section the alcove if we look at the alcove reference image we'll see that there are some chests pots random potion bottles and just sort of storage equipment so I decided to find 3d models of a lot of these things and then print them on my resin printer just because I I don't have to sculpt everything. So I picked some of the things that I knew I would not be able to sculpt well and accurately and printed those. Same with these barrels, which all have to be roughly the same size and shape or they'll just look dumb. So model it is. Also, I was going to make a million potion bottles by hand and then I realized I could just resin print them. So I did that. I printed and cut out a bajillion of these and I put them in my little storage container, but they had an issue. The bottoms of them were just gross. So I saw this tip that people who make dice use where you get a mini pottery wheel and you tape some sandpaper onto it and then you just use that to sand any side of anything flat and this will save your hands. I'm honestly, it will save your hands. I did, however, mold and cast some other potion bottles besides those and the ones that we saw at the beginning of this video. And if any of you feel the compulsion to comment about how ugly and gross my hands and nails are, just don't. I'm already aware of it. It's also why I wore gloves in a lot of the painting sections of this video, because I was just like, ooh, my nails look a little, a little gross. But if you're working with polymer clay, you're gonna get that stuck under your nails every single day, so... And that concludes this demolding process. Speaking of using molds, I used the tabletop selling table mold to create all the little wood planks for this shelf. And if you're like, what shelf is that? It's here, 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 and here. And I just attached them off camera because it was very boring to watch. To make the very thin piece of fabric that goes over the top of the shelf, I made a very thin piece of clay, rolled it out, and stuck it on there with some translucent... I just had a stroke? Translucent liquid clay. Then I thought, mm, let's add a border to it because it's it, it has a border and I wanted it to have a three-dimensional border. Then I even thought, hmm, why don't we add some little cuts into it? It's old, it's worn. I don't know, maybe some moths ate part of it. Then I mixed this shade of doo-doo beige brown. <laughs> it just, it's always not the right shade. And then you add in a little bit more black or brown to try and make it the right shade. And by the end of it, you have used every single bit of acrylic paint you have and it's still not right. We got to go in with some beautiful burgundy purpley red and then paint the borders, this beautiful gold. I decided to also go in and try and add some shadows to give it more of a 3D effect because it's a miniature and I always see people doing this. You have one second to figure out what is in this picture that we have not made yet. And it's the banner. I rolled out another thin sheet of clay and then I just sort of sketched out the rough shape 
of this and then cut around it because I made it way too small. I ended up looking fine in the end and after I cut this out, I just tried to texture it by crumpling it in between my fingers and somehow that worked. After the crumpling, I painted this red and then you'll never guess what I decided to do. I decided to cut corners and freehand on the design and you know, a vinyl template probably would have looked better, but it wasn't worth the amount of time that would take to make and then apply. Speaking of apply, I applied this to the shelf and I'm excited because now I don't have to fill the space behind the banner with any little items. It just, it can stay empty. But you know what can't stay empty? Displays. Like these! You guys know the drill by now. I cut out a rectangle, I textured that rectangle, and then after I textured it, I said, I'm lazy, I'm not texturing this again. So I cut out the other base part, but then I molded. That's right, I molded both of them with silicone. Then I even did Future Me, a wonderful service of making a bunch of little pieces all at once. I rolled out some clin, clin? What did I just, I rolled out some polymer clay into very, very thin sheets so that I could set them on top of the displays to create their little mounting bases and also the wonderful pieces of fabric you see in this picture. Now this clay is, is definitely thinner than my patience, but my patience is getting there because I baked these and then immediately cracked every single one of them because of how thin I had made this clay. And it's entirely my fault, but I would like to blame someone else. So, um, polymer clay companies, come on, get it together. And in a rare moment of metacognition for me, I remembered I should not be using an airbrush. And so I painted these with just acrylic paints. No airbrush, no diddly dallying, just good old acrylic paint. We should all be thanking our lucky stars that I decided to just paint this on because if I had tried to airbrush this line, this project would not be happening. I would have airbrushed it once, messed up, and broken it. Now there's no point displaying your merchandise if there's no way for anyone to purchase it, so we're making the main desk. And as with all great furniture items, we're starting out with a piece of rolled out clay and a template being scratched onto it. Now I know these next two shots might make you think otherwise, but I promise I know how to properly hold and use a knife. I don't know what compelled me to cut this like upside down, I think it's because I was trying to make it look cool for the camera, but I didn't even succeed at that, so it was all for nothing. Now I'm cutting out the board that is going to run along the front of the desk and I'm making it as tall as I want the desk to be because it is going to be what the desk is standing on. I'm not making legs for this or anything. And this is where I attached it and it was just, this was a pain because clay doesn't want to stand up when you bake it and it also, when it gets hot, it becomes more malleable. So it kept falling off in the oven and I burned my hands trying to shove it back on. Time to use more translucent liquid clay to attach another piece of polymer clay to the original piece of polymer clay, and then add some more wood texture to it. This piece is now done and ready to be painted. And again, I'm using a f***ing airbrush for no reason, even though I learned I'm not good at it. But there is something I am good at, and that would be painting this and then adding a wash of acrylic paint over it, which is just watered down acrylic paint so that it goes into the grooves. Then you wipe the top layer of that paint off and you're left with a really cool detailed wood coloring. Now I want to add all the things that are sort of in this area, and that includes the cash register and this desk thingy. And the cash register is another thing that I decided to resin print because it just didn't make sense to try and sculpt this. I knew it would not look good. The desk, however, I tried to make a table and I gotta be honest, making a table with clay, again, it's very wibbly wobbly. So it's almost impossible to get the legs to do the sort of curvy thing they do in the reference picture without having to micromanage this in the oven. I gave it its base layer of paint and then I did another acrylic wash. It didn't really show up as much, but it's there. And these are just a few things that I made off camera that are gonna go somewhere in this general area, so I'm clumping them in here. Speaking of this general area, 
I want to work on the other shelf system that's here. To make all the wood planks for this, I used some of the molds I had made, not specifically the one I'm showing here, but similar ones to make all of the planks and then I hot glued them together, which was a regrettable decision because if you remember earlier, I said you can't put hot glue in the oven and my dumbass did not think about this. And so I couldn't bake a backing onto this piece and that's why it's just open, even though it shouldn't be. The only two things in this shelf are these two chests, and honestly, I'm very happy about that because there are so many tiny things in this diorama. I textured some rectangles of clay, put them together, and then baked them. Then I slowly started building up all the other little details on the outside of this, and then baking in between every detail because if you don't do that, you run the risk of just smushing everything you've done. And it's sort of like cooking. You underbake it so you don't bake it for as long as you should because you're going to be putting it back in the oven and you don't want to overbake it and burn it. Science. Also, don't cut things on your fingers with an X-Acto knife unless you're really confident about it. And even then, don't do that. And just like with the potion bottles, I made a mold of this before I painted it so that I could cast it multiple times to use this piece around the diorama instead of just, you know, once and having to re-sculpt it. If we zoom and enhance into the corner of this picture, we'll see that there are in fact two cauldrons, neither one of these which I am making. I am actually making this cauldron and it's really not a good version of it. This is one of the sort of last things I made for this project and I think I was just tired so I apologize that this is not the best thing I could have made, but uh, I tried. And I tried by rolling out a piece of clay and then wrapping it around this circular base to make the base of the cauldron that I could sculpt things onto, but it kept losing its shape. So once I cut all these little wood planks that I had previously made from yet another mold in half, I added them onto this and it was going well. But because it kept losing its shape, I had the genius idea to put a circular cookie cutter in it because the metal can go in the oven and then it also doesn't bond to polymer clay, so I could just pull it out later. Now since this cauldron was the last thing I had to make for this, it's time to put all the little things together and then into the base. I'm just gonna let the wonderful music take you away, so enjoy the process. <laughs> 